everybody. Here we are again. My name's Colin Way. We're back here for our live stream, uh, bringing the skill center to your workshop. Now, I'm joined once again by um, uh, hardened cameraman, professional, Charlie. He's behind the camera, so he'll be pleased. He knows exactly what he's doing, um, and he'll be able to ask any questions that you might have. Now, before we start, I made a bit of an error um, last session. I forgot to mention a couple of really, really dear friends of of ours as the family and of Axminster's uh, tools. Um, Ian and Alison Daly, all the way over in Perth, they watch every single um, live session. So hi to those two. I guess it's lovely, warm and sunny over there. Um, so I just wanted to say that before we start. Now today, we're gonna go straight into it. Um, we're making um, fishing lures. One of my other passions, apart from wood turning, is fishing. And um, making wooden fishing lures um, has been a part of, of my woodworking for, for a long, long time now. Don't worry, if we, we spoke about making floats as well, I've decided that I'm going to break each section down. So we're going to do lures today and floats next Tuesday because they're in, individually they're quite big um, projects. So um, before we start doing anything, I just wanted to give you a source of, um, of information and a book that when I started making uh, fishing lures, that was really, really useful to me. Now, as a company, Axminster Tools don't sell this one, but it's out there. I'm sure you can buy it anywhere. Um, a really fantastic book on um, making fishing lures, and it goes through everything right from the very beginning to, um, to not necessarily turning, but shaping lures from hand as well, and some of the um, parts involved. Um, really, really good read and really useful, really useful. So that was, um, so making wooden fishing lures, okay. Uh, another source um, for me for um, parts and everything to do with lures um, is uh, Fishing Lures Online. It's uh, an American company, uh, but they supply all the paraphernalia when it comes to, to making fishing lures. I'm gonna show you some of that in a moment. Um, but first, let's have a look at what we're gonna do. Um, so if you're not into fishing, don't worry. Um, you're still going to get a lot of technique out of this. So the turning technique, the the, um, the airbrushing technique itself, and maybe the finishing, because we're going to use an epoxy to finish these, um, uh, which will take a fair while. Um, but I'm just going to show you a couple. So the differences between what we're doing. So um, if you're not into fishing, um, the, you're, you might learn something anyway. Um, so this is um, this is what we call a popper. This is designed. So if you if you know your fish at least, this is a pattern, a perch pattern. So it's um, to, to imitate the perch. And if you're into your fish and know your fishing, you'll you'll um, recognise the perch pattern straight away. Those lovely stripes. Maybe Charlie, come in a little bit quick, uh, closer, just so we can have a good a good close look at these patterns. There's a few more down on the desk in a minute as well. So the perch pattern has its uh, very um, uh, noticeable orange belly, and then you've got the dark top with the stripes down the side. This particular um, uh, lure is designed to skim across the top. So you put your, um, your line on there, you're gonna have a hook here and here. And what happens, this is a little bib, and it's um, used to displace water, so it actually wiggles as it go across the top of the surface. Um, uh, I'm in the UK, so this would be used for pike, things like that, Xander, those types of fish, those predators, uh, freshwater. Um, then for, this, for the same type of fish, we're looking at a little brown trout pattern. And this is a green top, you've got the brown spots of the brown trout with the, with the red um, flanks and a white belly on that one. Um, and then we can just mess around with our, our patterns. And again, I'm gonna show you a few more in a minute, but this is just variations on themes. Again, this is a popper. This is a, um, a freshwater, um, um, what we call a popper. Same thing, water displacement in the front, but no bib added on this one. So it pulls along and then it wiggles and wobbles around. Now you can have um, add rattles inside as well. And again, um, places like Lure um, Parts Online will do those. Um, the tail, that's, um, I tend to tie my own flies for fly fishing as well. And this is a bucktail um, uh, feather, a uh, bucktail tail, um, which has just been um, tied onto a triple hook. Okay. So let's, Charlie, let's just pop down onto the desk. I just want to show everybody a few of the, the bits and bobs we're going to use today and um, what's happening for next Tuesday as well. So. Here are just a few uh, other lures. We've got some saltwater bass lures here. So I'm talking about the UK saltwater bass, um, not the freshwater bass from the States. Again, I could use my, um, if it was a saltwater bass, 
um, sorry, a freshwater bass in the in the states. We probably go for one of the freshwater patterns, to be um, quite honest. But that's that one. And then there's just a few other uh, natural um, uh, colours there. So scale effects. We're going to do some scale effects um, and loads and loads of them there. Um, on Tuesday next week, we're going to go to our floats again for the fishermen. These are going to be freshwater floats, and we've got a good selection, a good variation there of of those. And we're going to be doing a little bit of cork turning, um, and also making some solid timber ones like these. That's for next week. So some of the paraphernalia. So some of the things, if you're into fishing, you'll understand completely what these are. So we've got some little split rings here, obviously hooks we've got. If you're gonna sell things with hooks on or give them away, you need hook shields. So they're to cover, a little covers for the shields, uh, for the hooks. Um, bearings, we've got propellers. So propellers, again, it's another type of lure as this gets pulled through the, pulled through the water. The little props do uh, move. It's just to disturb the water to attract the fish in. So little props. Same sort of thing here. We've got our little spoons. Um, spoons are used to do the same thing. They they flutter and and um, create a, a, an attraction. Um, and then all things. These are little bibs that go on the front in a similar way to this one. But these bibs here, these are designed to make the um, to make the lure sink. So the more more um, uh, angle you have on the front of the bib, the further down it will sink. So as you pull, it, it dives down into the water. Um, so that's some of the paraphernalia there. Over here, we've got our airbrushing equipment. So I've had to, just because of the amount of airbrushing we're gonna do on this one, I've already prepped a couple up, uh, a couple of pieces up here that I've turned earlier. Um, and these are already been primed with white um, paint, but I've got plenty here to turn. Um, there's uh, one thing we didn't look at, um, eyes, eyes are very important. And so I got just different packs of, of colored eyes here. Um, and we tend to put those on before you put the top coat on, before you epoxy. So really, once you put the primer on, um, or once you finish turning, then it's drilled, then the primer goes on, then the airbrush color, then you put your eyes on, then the epoxy. Um, this is the way I work anyway. And there's just various, um, types of uh, lip and spur a bit there that I only use for these because it has to be a very crisp hole um, and nice and clean. Um, so I keep a good set of drill bits purposely for that. Now in terms of making the scale effects, there we are, that's webbing. Now I I buy specific webbing for this, again from from uh, Lure Parts, but I don't know, a pair of old fish nets, either your wives or your own, whichever, I'm sure they'll do the same thing. Orange netting, orange, um, the, the fruit orange uh, netting, fruit netting, that sort of thing. I just find this is the right size, this mesh. I don't know whether you can get, that can be seen there, Charlie. A um, couple of different sizes. When I say the right size, I have a fine and a, a coarser one. In reality, what they look like, you get quite a big, there we are, see that one there, quite a big diamond on the large. That can be seen compared to the finer the finer markings on that one there. That's just the two different types of, uh, of mesh. So I think we ought to start doing something now. You've seen all the equipment. Um, you've seen what we're gonna do. You know we're gonna do the floats next week, next Tuesday, so let's get turning. Um, now, as an idea, so I obviously um, sell these, I, I use them myself. I live right on the coast down the southwest of England, so perfect for all those lovely um, bassing, um, mackereling, um, uh, uh, fishing trips. Um, but if you aren't in fishing at all, then they can be great displays. If you know a fisherman, you know, frame them up, two or three in a frame, they look fantastic. Cut them down through the middle, you've got two for the price of one. Don't have to um, put hooks in, you don't have to put any of the other paraphernalia on it, you just paint them and they look great. Um, so what I'll do, let's start off as if I'm gonna turn um, proper lure. To start with, we need to drill because um, on all of the lures, you need some but, um, some degree of, uh, of metal work. So what I've done here, um, let me get one to show you. Let's just pick that one up. Uh, before you go on, yeah. uh, what's your personal best pike? I don't know, I've never caught a pike in my <laughs> life. Um, bassing is a different story altogether, but I've never had a, a decent sized pike, I'm afraid, so I'm not gonna give you a, 
uh, fisherman's story of the one that got away. Um, I'm very much, I'm living on the coast here, so it's something that I haven't really often done that much. My brother could tell you a different story, though he's got some good sized pike. Um, there we are, we've got a bib in the front of that one. We've got that little rattle on the back. Now that's important, that's the last hook. So we're gonna go central for that. So I want to drill a hole in both sides of this. I'll, I'll do two pieces, all right? So we've got a hole in, uh, or a bradle mark in both sides. Yeah, let's come in now nice and close, Charlie. So what I'm going to do, I'll just hold in, because my chuck won't quite go down to zero, um, I'm just holding it in a little pin drill, uh, pin drill chuck, and I can hold smaller drill bits in that. Um, lay speed to zero before I start the machine up. Get my glasses a moment, safety specs. And we're going to drill a couple of little holes. I want this to run nice and um, central, so I am putting it between centers. You could do it quickly by hand, I guess but this is just gonna run nice and central. Don't overclog the drill bit, allow it to clear itself, otherwise you're gonna break it. So from both sides, and then you know that that is running right at the center. We're gonna use that drill hole now for its for a center point. There we go, declog it. I'll do the other bit whilst we're here. So that's, we, that's our drill, but that's about a millimetre up through there. The, we're going to use that, once we've actually turned and, and primed it, we're going to use that, that one millimetre hole um, with one of these eyes. And this eye is going to, this eye is going to screw up through there. And that's going to be our main support when we actually come to paint it uh, in a moment. So that's, that's for it in a second. So that... Uh, can come off. Just a minute. Yeah. Uh, is the pin chuck from Axminster? Uh, yes, yes. I uh, the set of five. Set of five. Team Axminster, if you're there, I know you are. Um, if you could get that set of five pin chucks up, Charlie, in that red drawer, second drawer down, I think. There's a little wooden box, and that wooden box has the set of pin. Oh, next one down again then. So we're going to drive this with a, just a single pointed center. And you can see that I've been doing this today because I've got white paint on there. And I'm missing one up, so I've, it's upstairs. So basically the, the pin chucks come just in a little set like that. Okay. Um, I'm missing one. I've got it upstairs in my craft room at the moment. They're good for hand drilling. You know, you can just put it in between your fingers and, and um, if you just do a small hole, um, drill by hand, it's quite quite useful. Two points. Uh, hang on, before I do that, we're going to use that one to finish off. Sorry, this is my first one. If I use that single point, it's not quite enough friction to drive. So let's do our what we call a little bobber. Remember the hole all the way up through there. We're going to do that or, or use this center to, to do most of the, the turning and then finish it off with that single point one there. Okay, we're going to get some real speed going here as well. Uh, this is lime, by the way. It's a beautiful bit of timber. Um, lime is great because there's not too much um, grain to obstruct you. So no, not too aggressive not too um, coarse in the grain, it turns beautifully, it's nice and light. So let's go with a small quarter inch bowl gouge, so we'll just rough it down. Might stop every now and again, we'll just tighten it up again. Once it um, finds its spike point on that drive sensor, which is a ring sensor, then you're okay. So this one's gonna be one of those that displace the water. So we're going to have a flat face on one side. There we go. So now we're down to solid round. We can start thinking about a shape. Make 
sure there's no flats left. Yeah, that's okay. And then we can go to our trusty skew. Don't worry about this side. This is going to be sanded off in a minute. So all I'm going to do is put a very slight arc there. over a little bit further. I don't want it too pointed. There we are. And then we can sand. Like I say, we don't need to worry about this face. This is going to be sanded at an angle in a moment. Um, what's the make uh, of the quarter inch bow gouge you use? So the one I'm using at the moment, oh, in fact I've got two up there, um, they're both Henry Taylor. And the bevel angle. And the bevel angle is 55 degrees. And can we have a close up? Close, yes, certainly. I'm going to put the extractor on, just sand that one. Charlie gives you a close up of the gouge. Show the angle as well. So we're starting off with this is 100 grit. And if you never caught that book at the beginning, guys, I'll show you again in a moment. Charlie's going to remind me before we finish to show the book at the end. So there we are. So that was a 150. Let's go 240 next. Now, I'm not going to use a sanding sealer here. Um, there is nothing stopping you using a sanding sealer. I just want to do this fairly quickly for you. The paint will soak in a long way. We'll explain about paints in a moment. But I don't need to go... I'm not worried about scratches disappearing or anything like that. So we're going to get the turning done relatively quickly. There we are. And then we'll go straight to the next piece. So that's my start of my, what we call our popper. Remember you've still got a hole at either end. Now we're going to go to, this is going to be more torpedo shaped. And I will change the drive centre halfway through. Well not halfway through, toward the end. you wouldn't use for the laws? For those? Um, yeah, I mean, you think about the purpose. So what do you want that, what do you want that 
to do. Um, is the, the the reason that I'm using uh, lime is that it's it's quite light. It's it's a pale timber, so it takes paint well. Um, it's easy to work. You know, there's, so there's lots going for it. You know. There we are. Um, balsa wood's used in some of the hand carved ones, but the only issue with balsa wood, they then they don't have the lifespan of something like this. You get a decent sized um, pike or um, bass hit your lure, and it'll actually um, you'll leave teeth marks in the balsa. So um, you know, lime's got some weight to it. You can flick it um, if you're casting. Um, it's just a, a you know, it lends itself more to this. But sycamore would be good. Um, I, maple would sort of be okay, it's a little bit heavy. Um, don't use heavy grain timber, so things like ash or oak. They've just got too much grain in there and it interferes with your painting. Uh, do you set the tool rest for the gouge or the skew? Say that again. Do you set the tool rest for the gouge or the skew? Do you set the tool rest for the gouge or the skew? Do you know, do I set the tool rest for the gouge or the skew? On small pieces like this, I move myself, drop the handle, raise the handle, and all those sorts of things. If this was a bigger piece, a bigger project, then I'd, want it, I'd be wanting to move the tool rest height um, to suit the tool I'm using, but I can get away with a lot more on uh, small pieces like this. There we are, 150. So we're up to a 240. And then we're going to start putting a little bit of colour on this. Or white, actually. There we are. We'll go with, one, we'll go with a 400 as well. We're just going to turn the extraction off for a moment. We're going to turn the extraction off for a moment. Um, and Charlie, just turn back. Let's just talk airbrushing. So, we, I've done some airbrushing with you before, and we've used. I'm passing that airbrush on there, there Charlie. That's it. Um, I've used these SP150s by Spraycraft. Um, and I normally have a little bottle underneath with a load of um, spirit wood stain in it. For what I'm doing here, I'm using um, an acrylic paint, so a, a true airbrush paint. Um, so here are some vivid colours. This is the auto colour, so these, these, um, these are specific for, for what I want. They've got a glitter in them, um, and we know fishing lures, they're bright, they're colourful, they're... Um, really attracted to the fish, so that was important. So that's a, that's a water base. So don't mix up your airbrushes. If you're using a water base um, ink, color, whatever, don't mix that up with your um, spirit base. Otherwise, it's, it's water and oil mixing. Really, it doesn't work, and you'll bung up your airbrush. So use one for acrylics, one for spirits. Okay. Um, so that's one. I mean, again. Uh, that's a uh, really important colour for me, that's the burnt umber, that's important for most fishing lures that I'm doing. Um, but they are, they are a different type of, of um, paint. Okay, um, I'm not using the, the um, suction fed, fed airbrush, I'm using a gravity fed now because I'm not going to um, keep my paint in the airbrush for long. Um, the trouble with acrylics, they will dry very quickly. Spirit stains, I can keep them in there months, it doesn't matter. Acrylics, I want to wash these as soon as I finish with them. So all I'm going to do is put a couple of drops to do the job, spray, a couple of um, drops of cleaner, then the next colour, and so on. And I can do that with my gravity fed ones. It's much easier to clean as you go with those, okay, compared to the suction fed one I normally use. So we're going to do that. We're going to spray with white first. Um, one option, if sorry, Charlie. One option, if you only have uh, 
um, suction fed airbrushes, go for one of these. You can get these on the internet and basically they replace the little jar that goes down here. There we are, that just slots in there. And then you can now put a little drop at a time in there, clean it out, next drop and so on. So it's a sort of a, a halfway house if it were. They're really quite useful. They're just, they're just like I say, they just converse it into a single, a single use airbrush. Right then, let's get some white paint on there. We're going to use this one. This is acrylic white. All of this has a heavy pigment. You need to shake it. The general rule is three minutes. I have used these this morning and um, I've shaken them all fairly well. Um, so they should be all right. And we're going to use one of our suction feeds. Sorry, I keep saying suction feed. Um, gravity fed and get some paint going in there. Once we've got this done, I'll only do one of these because I've got some primed and ready for you to see. Uh, what makes it the gravity airbrush? Gravity, because the paint's on top and it's just pure gravity that, that pushes the paint down toward the air, where a suction feed, it pulls the paint up as the, the air flows over the top. Okay, so that's the difference. Right, I'll put the dust extractor on. So me and Charlie aren't breathing in any residue. We'll turn the lathe on. If you're really worried about getting paint on your sensors, put a bit of mask and tape on. But to be quite honest, a little bit of sand paper will take that paint off. So little and often we spray lots of times. So if I just stop that now, look, you can see it's starting to change colour. I don't want it to get too wet. If I see it starting to shine at me, I'll just take take my little craft dryer. It's not a hair dryer, it is a craft dryer, and give it a little bit of a dry. Then we're away again. read the last question wrong. Uh, what is the gravity airbrush? Well, the mate, um, I've got quite a few different ones there. Let me um, turn the extractor off and lay it off and we'll show you. So, these are my Axminster ones. Okay, so they're, I think they're spray craft again. I've got another spray craft Spa Max one there. This one we're going to use in a moment. And I have a mixture of um, Badger airbrushes. Uh, again, let me grab one to show you. Probably the most expensive airbrush I own, that one. That's my Badger. Okay, and again, just gravity fed. Um, and do you know what? I think that the, those airbrushes range massively in price from about 20 quid up to around about 150 quid. And as long as you look after them, they work. You know, they, they really do work. Maybe if you're into airbrush art and you're painting amazing pictures, that sort of thing, then you might tell the difference. With what I do, this sort of basic stuff, it, they, there honestly isn't any any difference for me, or I haven't found any difference anyway. Right, so let's get let's start getting some colour. So I'm going to put that onto one side just for the minute. I'm going to clean the decks down. We'll get a bit of wood up here. And again, Charlie, just pan back for the moment. Let's make some space. Uh, what, what's the paint being used? The name. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So I've got Badger. I've got Auto Air colours. I've got Createx colours. Loads of different makes. Haven't found a bad one yet. I'm sure there are some out there, but I haven't found one. As long as you keep them sealed, they'll last for ages. 
and we're talking long, 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 long time, years. Let's make some space. Beautiful bit of oak to paint on. Well, we're not actually going to paint on it, but there. Um, right, we're going to get all of these up now. So before I do anything, we're going to um, cover them in in one colour, or certainly the top in one colour. So let's just do one at a time. So let's do, I don't know, we'll do this one. There's my perch. And then we'll do this one as our, no, we'll do this one as my perch, and this one as our trout. And we'll get you in nice and close in a minute so you can see what's happening. I just want to show you how they're set up. So these are those screw eyes. They're just going to give me a means to hold this whilst well, I'm spraying so I can actually hold it without getting um, fingerprints all over the thing. Remember what airbrush paint's going to do. It's going to go on dry so we can overspray over the top. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit at a time on the first one. So we said about cleaning out between. I've, that's enough of white now. don't need to use the white anymore. But I've got shavings down here. Any excess white I'm just going to get rid of. Then we're going to use our cleaning cup. I'll pop that there for the minute. We do need a little bit of tissue which I have in my pocket. And I'm going to use a mixture of things now. A little bit of, you can use water on acrylics if, to be honest. But um, this sort of thing in terms of the cleaner works a little bit quicker. So this is um, thinner and this is this is actual cleaning solution, this one. So a little bit of that in there. Um, and we're gonna spray it through first. So get the air flowing. Now what this little cleaning jar is, basically you're spraying the excess into the jar and there's a filter here that lets the air back out again. So you're not breathing in loads and loads of horrible um, paint fumes, basically. Completely gone? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I thought for a minute Charlie was saying that we've lost the feed. All right. Sorry, me and Charlie are having, um, we're lip reading each other here. Do you want to, do you want me, do you want to come close? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. You can speak. Everybody can hear you. Um, pass me that paintbrush down there as well, Charlie. Come on, Charlie, you've done this long enough. Which one? Everybody knows what you sound like. Um, that little paintbrush down there. Black handle. There we are. Once you've done that, um, if you're finally cleaning them out, if you don't want to take it apart just every single time, a little bit of a swill around in there with your paintbrush, in the shavings, squirt out the residue, and then you're good to go for your next colour. So in this case, we're going to use a nice bright pearlescent. And this is going to be the back of our perch. And we're going to do exactly the same thing on the back of the back of the trout. So I'm going to hold this up to with the dust extractor on up to the extractor. The double um, action again, this, this airbrush. you think, oh actually that's a little bit too wet, then what you can do, go for your, go for your dryer,
got that lovely little shimmer in this. That one's okay, we'll do the next one. Same thing. Uh, doesn't the paint clog up the filter on the dust extractor? No, it's, but by the time it hits that, it's completely dry particles that are going up there. It's not going to be wet at all. Usually by the time it hits the timber, it's dry. I'm just putting on loads quite quickly because I don't want this to take too much of your time up watching paint dry. In 37 minutes. 37 minutes. Rid of that excess paint that's in there. Give it a squirt. Give it a swill. All right. This was a question a few weeks ago. Actually, someone saying, you know, do I need to get lots of airbrushes? Can we get away with one or two? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I'm using the same one to do several colors. Right, so next, let's go for our, we need our burnt umber. That's the color. So burnt umber. Shake that a minute for me, Charlie, while I set the thing up. Just keep shaking. So we're gonna use, there's a bit of my huge gauze. We're gonna clamp that on with some little electrical clips. Do have electrical clips? Pegs. Uh, do you know when you are going to have the center slash drives demo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I was concentrating then. Um, being a bloke, I can only do one thing at a time, I keep being told by my wife. Um, so let's, let me just get that on there. I'll tell you exactly when. So that's fully covered with the gauze and it's just clamped on there nicely. Look, we'll do the same thing with that one while Charlie keeps shaking. And while he's shaking, passes me a couple of more of those that are in the top of that. No, a couple more of those. No. Yeah. I'll be fine, another two or three. It's good having an assistant in the workshop. So I'll just do it roughly for you, but there, that's gonna be our trout. That's gonna be our perch. Um, so yes, we had a, so a list of dates for you. So. Next Tuesday, we're going to be doing the floats. Okay, your floats that I showed you earlier. Next Thursday, pens part three. We have questions about doing difficult pen kits. So we're going to do a nice big, thick, um, I think it's an Empress pen. And we're also going to do a, um, a fountain pen that has a little notch cut out of the lid. So we're going to do that, especially from a question that was asked. Then, Tuesday the 18th, my plan is to do chucks and centers, including a couple of new ones called Pro Lives. Um, I want to show you some new uh, chuck packages, that sort of thing. So get your questions ready um, or get them in now in terms of um, chucks and centers and all those things. I won't go any further than that, but I have got the uh, the days all listed out now. So um, what about the eccentric chuck demo? The eccentric has been done. We've done one. We've done one. Um, I can revisit it again. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it'd be going in well into September now, though. Um, I know there was a concern at some point about us not, I'll have that paint on it, 
about um, you know are we going to continue we certainly are we're not stopping these demos they've proven very popular we're loving them um, venues might change after all Charlie's got to start college in September and Finley's got to get a job um, so we might we might have uh, a change of venue but it's still going to have the same content with the same demonstrators and we're going to introduce a few more as well so I'm not going to spoil the surprise we're going to I'll tell you more about that when we get closer to starting it. So, Burnt Umber. Uh, where do you get the self-standing extraction ducting from? That's Mr. Dawes. It's a adjustable height dust nozzle. There we are, a little bit of Burnt Umber. Burnt Umber is only going to appear on our perch to start with down the back. So oh, well, let's turn that dust extraction on. Uh, just quickly, yeah. uh, when you clean out the airbrush cleaning pot, how do you dispose of the contents, assuming it's not the sort of thing you put down the sink? You don't put it down, absolutely not. What I tend to do is soak it up with rag. A lot of it, if, if you leave it in there long enough, Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, the water evaporates and it goes hard in there anyway, so then you can dispose of it um, in the bin sort of thing. Um, or soak it up in your rag, let the rag dry out, like you would oil. You know, let that rag dry out before you dispose of it, um, then it becomes safe. There we are. I'll be honest, this one I've never disposed of anything in there, I've never cleaned it out, the water evaporates. So I'm going to just do straight down the back. Obviously you're going to wear gloves. Do what I'm doing. So just a nice band down the back for our perch. Once we've done that, then we're going to put our stripes in. I'll show the camera in a moment. So you can see what we're getting there at the moment. We'll do the big reveal in a second. Our per, uh, sorry, our, our trout, that's going to have a series of just little dots. enough of the mesh so again I'll turn the extractor off but have a look and see what we've got and we're going to go over to a red okay, just wash out my airbrush Done. So right, we can take the mesh off. Let's go for this one. It's nice and dry. So you can see our scale patterns now appearing on that uh, that nice little perch. Okay, we'll do the same thing with Mr. Trout. All right. So they don't come to life until you put the belly colours on. So there's our back colour. So we can get rid of all that mesh now. But look, I mean, we're handling these. The paint's not wet. It's um, it's nice and quick. That's what I like about airbrushing. 
So Charlie, I just need, can you pass me yellow and red? We'll start with the red and pass me one of those little mixing cups down there. That's it. Lovely job. So a little mixing cup. We're going to do an orange for our perch and we're going to keep it red. Uh, what compressor are you using? So I've got a couple on the go. Maybe Charlie, whilst I'm mixing these colours up, just have a have a um, scan over there a minute. Um, yeah, so I'm using two. Now, this is my original airbrush compressor. Um, Axmas don't do these anymore, um, but I'm using it until it dies. Um, the one I use an awful lot and take around a demonstration is this one. This is the Sparmax. Okay, so lovely little unit, that one. Um, turn it on. That's its volume. So beautiful. If you're doing a lot of airbrushing, that's a stunning little um, unit to use. Um, we can certainly do that on these. Um, and like I say, it's so light, you can put it away quite easily. You can even use that one indoors if you have some ventilation going. Um, it's a nice one to use. Um, then if I use this one, that'll be used um, through the same get up here. So um, um, I need to um, control the pressure. So I would use it through my airbrush um, regulator here. So you can use a big one like the Swan down there um, through a um, regulator. That one has its own regulator, um, as does, uh, no, this one's through my regulator as well. So, you know, this from the smallest right to the largest there, they can all be used for airbrushing. I'm using anywhere between sort of 25 and 40 PSI on this. So um, we're not using a massive amount of pressure. There we are. All I want to do, that's going to be an orange. That's going to be for our perch. Just mix that up. So I'm not really spending too much time getting a particular colour. And then for our and then for our trout, which is this one, this one's gonna have, you know, a trout doesn't have a very um only has a red flanks, doesn't have a, a red um, belly. So I'm just gonna very gently You got ten minutes. Got 10 minutes, okay. So this is a true red here, but it, because it's going over the white, it's, it's coming out that lovely sort of pink color. So there we are, you'll have to direct me. Oh, Charlie. There we are. So you can see the red flanks on that, that rainbow. Sorry, brown trout. All right, lovely little markings, that one. So let's go for the orange now. So I'll get rid of the red that's in that airbrush. Made a bit of a mess there. Never mind. Um, we're going orange, so I'll do a rough clean out of the red. And I'll the orange that I've just made. There we are, and the perch, the whole of the underside of this is gonna be our orange. So there's our perch button. All right. So one more thing. Once you've done that, once you've done your eyes, so you've drilled your holes, you've put your, your eyes in, you're happy with all your paint, we need to put uh, a finish on it. Now I'll do, let's do our trout. Make sure that's done up nicely. So we're just gonna move some of this stuff a minute. Turn the compressor off. Get all of this out of the way then, Charlie. Put that on top there. So once we've done that, what we're gonna, I would leave them to set generally 
give them a 24 hours, get everything to harden nicely. And then we're gonna pop a chuck on the lathe and set yourself up a drying rack. I do it with little bits of florist wire on a little L-shaped bracket. So you have three or four or even a dozen or so um, lures going at once. Just pan back a second, Charlie, just while we explain this. So I'm trusty Chuck. Uh, is it okay to clean an acrylic airbrush with white spirits? No, no, definitely not. You will, you'll ruin your airbrush if you do that. Um, stick with water or um, you can get proper acrylic cleaning fluid. Um, this is all water-based. Even both of these makes, uh, where's the other one? So that's the Auto Air Color. Um, so that one's a, that's a water-based um, cleaner. Um, same with the Badger, they're, they're all water-based. Um, you can use water. You could use water to do the bulk of it and then just finish up with a little bit of the cleaner, just so you're not using too much of the cleaner, you know? So that's, that's nice and firm there now. This is probably one of the cheapest way outs of doing a clear cut on your fishing lures. How long have we got, Charlie? Seven minutes. Seven minutes left? Yep. Oh, got ages. So we're gonna use epoxy. Um, I would tend to go for five minute because you want it to dry quickly. Um, I don't have much five minute left, so we're going to use a 30. I have a little bit more 30 from our pen making um, demo. A little bit of scrap wood from the scrap bin there, Charlie, if you would. Big or small? Um, just to mix this on. That's perfect. It's been used already, but job, well, thank you. A little bit of scrap wood. This is the Z Poxy. You've seen um, me use this on the pens before. Okay, Z Poxy. 30 minute or five minute. If you're doing one or two of these, just use the five minute. It'll dry nice and quickly. But it'll dry, start drying nice and quickly. So five minutes as a glue, it's ready. Um, if you're using this as a clear coat, I leave it about a week for it to properly harden. Oh, I haven't opened that one. Yeah, about a week to properly harden. Now, don't worry, we are nearly finished, so don't worry about the time, Charlie. So, equal point, equal parts. And I'm going to use a decent amount so we don't need to redo it. Now, I know this works, I know it's tough, because I've dragged this up through a pebbly beach. Um, and it works really well. Doesn't scuff. Pass me an, again another paintbrush. So, right, I'm going to waste a paintbrush here, or I'm going to use a paintbrush. I buy packets of paintbrushes very oh, cheaply. The book. Remember the book. Don't forget the book. Yeah, I buy very cheap uh, brushes for one use. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put that on better than lathe. Decent size brush. We're going to lather this on to start with. Don't worry, it's going to look horrible to begin with. And mind my chuck as well. When this sets, it's going to be around about a millimetre thick. Four minutes. Four minutes, good. It should be just right. So look how much I'm putting on. This is a coating, remember. And you need to brush it and you need to maintain it for a little bit. You need to be with it. Now this I've got loads of bits of muck in it and everything. So be careful. Don't use a scrappy bit of wood like I've just chosen. Now, 
what we're going to do is utilize our lathe. We're going to use that to let this dry nice and evenly. Look how coated that is. I'm going to run that for a little bit while we talk about the book. Because at the moment, it's, it's obviously liquid. Given that a couple of minutes, that's going to go to one thickness. It's not going to be all bobbly like the way it is at the moment. Now I've brushed it on. I want to keep that running. And with the five minute, you'll, it'll dry literally um, enough to be able to take it off and hang it up. Hang it off on, like I said, get yourself a little drying rack with uh, florist wire. Hang each one off of the little, the little eye I've done there. We'll give that just a few more seconds, then I'll stop it to show you what the surface is looking like. The book. Like I say, you may have to, well, you will have to look online for it. It's called Making Wooden Fishing Lures. I've used this an awful lot. Um, it's a really great inspiration, and it, it basically does everything that I've just done. Goes over all the hardware um, and how you make different individual fishing lures, including the ones I've just made. The spraying, which I've just done, this is not my idea. This is this is directly out of. Um, of, of this book so it's a great read um, really interesting if you're if you want to give um, fishing lures a go um, explains a lot so that's the book guys I hope you've been I hope you've enjoyed that coming down and have a quick look Charlie right right close uh, just quickly could you use an acrylic spray instead what lacquer it's not strong enough with this this epoxy, now just have a get right close in there, Charlie. I want people to see the finish we're getting. It's about a millimeter thick, okay, and it's going to be a level surface, very glassy, very tough, okay. And when finished, if I can just get you one of my finished ones, just get you one of the finished ones. You can see that's the look, and they're tough as. You can drag them up the beach, you can get the biggest fish on that one and it won't leave teeth marks. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna guarantee that, but let's hope it does leave teeth marks. Guys, thank you very much. We're right up to eleventh hour again. If you've enjoyed that, fantastic. Come back and see more on Tuesday. Tuesday next week, what did I say we're gonna be doing? We're gonna be making the floats to accompany our lures and then pens on the Thursday. So thank you very much. Wonderful weekend. Bye bye.